I could I could listen to that for the next two hours. <laughs> if you ate that big bowl of pasta, it would make you take a nap, Wayne. Look, you know what, you know what's crazy is I y'all guess what? I I make it for the whole family. I don't know why people think I eat that all myself. I can't eat it all myself. I can't. But I am sleepy. <laughs> it was good though, but I'm sleepy. Okay, so welcome to the show. My name is Wayne Dupree. Over here is the cons- is the Godfather Conservative Radio, Mr. Hush Bailey Jr. All righty then. Hello, everybody. And over here is Mr. J.R. Robertson. Hey, hey, hey. Happy Thursday, everybody. Our Friday. Make sure you give us a like, a comment, and a share. Helps the show get reach. I want to thank everybody for sharing those snippets yesterday. It's kind of cool to... To see those snippets get such a reach uh, yesterday, just kind of uh, kind of made me feel happy, you know. Oh, good happy. clips! They were good clips, especially those final thoughts. Um, <laughs> um, okay, so today is our is our Friday. We we don't broadcast on Friday. One of the reasons why we don't broadcast on Friday is because we. It's almost like a family, family day type of stuff, and you can only do. I mean, I don't know whether I should. I don't know whether I should say God bless those that do it, twenty four seven, seven days a week, or you need your heads checked if you do it twenty four seven, seven days. Yeah, a we're week. already on four days a week from twelve noon to about three or four. <laughs> <laughs> Today we're going to do extended cuts. We'll be on till about five six. I had to get those cuts, man. I had to get those. Cuts. It was um, fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. At least we aren't boring. Um, like yeah, a lot we, of these shows are. I, I know. I know. Oh, it's I know. horrible. I don't know how one person. I don't know how one person can just do three hours of talking. Right to nobody. And well, you know, sometimes they might have a guest here and there, but just three hours. I can't. I mean, every day, I can't do it. I can't do it. That's why. That's why I was like, I gotta have somebody to talk to. You. And then I was like, well, it's me. And this, this is, we gotta bring somebody else, kind of balance it out a little, little bit. You know, two on one, one on two, three on three, whatever. How do you remember when we had four? Uh, it was a video. Uh, Video cast, spree cast, spree cast, Jason. Crazy, those were crazy shows. <laughs> Jason, spree cast was ahead of his time. Spree cast was basically, um, it like was like Joe Twitter, with, it was yeah. Twitter, Twitter with yeah. video. Oh, yeah. really? And you yeah. can play video. It was, I mean, it was like Wayne said, it was ahead of its time. I don't yeah. know if it was an experiment. Or what? Because it was free and it was awesome, and all of a sudden it was gone. Really? And four people, five people, six people video. Oh wow! <laughs> the time, the time we had the guy on, and Duck, um, Dynast- Duck Dynasty. No, the, the guy from Canada. We had him on, and we and we said that something was wrong with his mic. So he picked up his chair and moved oh, to the middle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's listening. He's, he's probably listening right now. I know. That's uh, why I didn't want to call him out. I, <laughs> but, you know, I'll tell you, it, it was a pretty cool situation, too, because yeah. he was, like, out in the Badlands of California. Yeah. He, he, like, had a coal stove or something, you know. And I remember one day, I don't know if he had just came in or something. He said, yeah, man. 
I had to shoot a Wolverine. It was going after my dog or something. Like that. <laughs> I was like, damn. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, we told him, it's like, yeah, no, it's something wrong with your mic. You're too loud. He so he picked back. up his chair and moved to the back of the middle of the room. Is this all right? <laughs> basically, basically, yeah, right. <laughs> well, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be unusual like for some of us on the show to have problems with mics or cameras. I'm just saying. We, this was, we, this was we in the early days. Play. Yeah, man. Yeah. Listen. Let's get right to it. Um, with the with the many things that we're seeing around, and yesterday kind of threw us for a loop with what Ava was talking about. Um, kind of shook us there for for everything that we did not know and learning um, about China. And see, I already heard about the balloons over Taiwan so Saturday night or Sunday night, That's and I was balloons, like, "Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, that." It's kind of weird, but for her to say that they had already knew about it at the, at the end of the year, they weren't they weren't sure about it, but they knew about it. And then to see it, they were like, "Okay, well, their intel is good." Which 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 I go back and Ava is uh, part of our um, four foreign correspondents with the new federal state of China. Um, they get intel, and they come on here and they share it for you. They share it on the show. And then they let you know what's going on with the CCP. And yesterday I, I threw the question. I was like, why, why isn't the, um, why isn't our uh, intel finding out stuff like that? They know. They just don't tell us. They have to know, right? Of course they know. They have to know. Almost like 9-11. So with, um, so, so with that said, I had to, I have to challenge it. that. I challenge that statement. <laughs> Thank you very much for challenging. News guard, he challenged it. So I lost. I, I just did that. There. I lost yeah. the timeout. <laughs> Do we say hello to our friends at News Guard? We haven't had a fact check for a while. We'll we'll work. Yeah, hello, that. you sons of biscuits. Um, uh, the que- the the, que- the question has to come up is like, is the American dream dead? Um, you're looking at the border. You're looking at um, the, inc- the incompetence of Congress. You're looking at the the um, the, the ratings based media. They they live for the ratings. They don't live for the truth. They just live for the ratings. They gotta have the ratings. Whatever gets them up there. Um, blood lead, blood, blood leads is what is it, Jason? Yeah, it's um, something like that. Blood leads. Yeah, blood leads. If it bleeds, like it leads. I if it bleeds, it leaves. Right. Yeah. Exactly. I don't know who came up with that, but uh, who, well, whoever came up with that, they were successful in getting viewership, and that's why they went ahead well, and did was, that. That was happening before TV. Yeah. Exactly. You yeah. look at the at the gangsters the and newspapers. everything. Yeah, the newspapers and stuff like that. But yeah, um, it's a question for everybody that's that's watching: Is the American dream? Or has it been destroyed within by these power grab? Is it dead? Now, I thought to you, Hutch, is American Dream dead? It's staggering. It's 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 moving around. It's not dead yet, but it's on a track dead, to yeah. die. It's on a track to die. If, if it's not, if, if something isn't dramatically changed, uh, we got a problem. Jason, does that mean that um, can we put a tourniquet on it and save it? Uh, or has it lost so much blood right now that a transfusion might not help it? You, you know, you've heard me say about Pandora's box. And so many people, and and I've, I've been caught up in the same thing, Jason. It's like, you know... Um, I wish it was like it used to be. You know, it. it's funny because when I saw the show title last night, and I, I was thinking about that, and I think at minimum we can say the American dream has radically been redefined. And I think to me it comes down into the change of the use of the word equality and moving it to equity. Because when the country was founded... It was founded by all these people that said, just get government out of the way. Give me a chance 
to raise my family, practice my faith, be good to my community. And everybody understood part of that equation is there's different outcomes. Some people do better, some people do worse, but it gives you the freedom to live your life how you want. And now as we've moved as a culture to this equality model or equity model, which means everybody gets the same outcomes, that fundamentally destroys America because- we, That sounds like socialism, but go ahead. Well, I, I was going to say, I mean, part of the part of the the freedom equality of opportunity model is that it encourages people to go do outstanding things. Because if you go do, build something or create a great business or a great product, you're going to be financially rewarded. But if there's no, re, you don't reap those rewards for producing, you it just brings it down. And then it, it filters into all parts of life. I mean, these kids get out, almost none of them envision like, making their own company or doing their own thing. They just want to plug into the matrix. I'm going to go work for this company. What are they going to pay me? You know, and now they don't even want to raise kids. So yeah, yeah the American dream is significantly different. Hutch, he, he, um, he brought, he brought up, he brought up something real, uh, real quick. And I want to throw, throw that over to you, especially with the way that the kids are. Today. I think, I, I think that in conjunction with what uh, Jason said, mm -hmm. uh, I think if you look back to our founding and John Adams, our second president, before mm -hmm. he was president, he said that because he was one of the authors of the Declaration and the Constitution and all that stuff going on. And he said this government is for a moral and religious people. I'm paraphrasing. Yep. For a moral and religious people. In other words, it's not for what we have now. Right. So you've got, you said about the youth, what we need to do to save this nation. We got to, I don't even know if it's possible, that, yeah. but I talked to a young man uh, that I damn near raised and he told me Christianity's bullshit. And there's a lot of people that feel that way. Yeah. Today it is. And if you look at the godless activity, especially of the Democrats, but not only the Democrats, right. right. Look at what they're trying to do. They're championing. Yeah championing murdering babies they're championing being single dog in the family i mean you can't survive that way not 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 in this model it has to be a tyrannical totalitarian model to survive in, in a world like that and that's uh it's up to us i mean it's not going to government's not going to fix it well and think Jason. about how the government's replaced faith and church. Mm -hmm. right. There was a time in America where you gave your money to your local church and organizations. You chose how much to give based on, and a lot of us still give to our churches. And then the churches helped and the community helped kind of support each other through hard times. And now the government down the barrel of a rifle says, give me 20% of your check Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to decide who gets the money, where it goes, and it gets eaten up by this bureaucracy. And that, I mean, people have even lost their spirit of charitable giving. You and know? by the way, we're the FBI Catholics and you're under arrest. Right. Yeah. You know, Jason, you brought up the equality piece and um, we're all different. We're all different. We've seen different. We, we feel different, uh, and and actually, to, in today's time, this is a day by day thing. <laughs> it's not even a, it's not even a lifetime thing anymore. It's a day by day thing. Today I feel good. Tomorrow, you know, God, there was you know. Uh, but when you talk about the equality thing, you have different people in America that feel they aren't getting equal treatment based on where they are. I mean, and, and I'm not, and you know, I, I could go color wise, but I'm not, I'm just going to go Americans today. There are, there are some Americans that feel they, they're, they're getting the short end of the stick. There's some Americans and we even talk about it here on the show um, uh, where um, white men right now are feeling that they are being um, 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 uh, disappeared. Okay, um, especially in uh, in the media, in which which 
which has been happening for a while. It's been happening for a while. I mean, you know, I I can sit here. Well, I have sat here and, I, and I've said, I don't know what to say. I really don't know what to tell you because I've seen it. But the thing is, <laughs> they won't fight back. <coughs> they let it happen. I mean, and 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 that's, I think, again, going back to the equality thing, uh, so many people see it so differently that I don't even know if anybody knows what's equal anymore. I don't know if anybody knows the real meaning of equal. Do you, you see I'm going with that? I think the difference to me is it breaks down to equal outcome or equal opportunity. And or, if you, well, I mean, I grew up poor right? and I got straight A's in school. And when it came time to go to college, I accepted the fact that there were limits where I could go and what I could do. Oh, Wayne's got hair. <laughs> no, I'm looking at yours. Oh, yeah. I haven't cut it yet, so I, <laughs> I went hat today. So, uh, but I just accepted that. Like, I'm not going to go to Harvard, even though I had a 4.0 GPA. That just wasn't in the cards. So I went to community college, and I worked my way up. And I knew I had a different starting point than rich people did, taking, you know, race out of it. But I understood that I had every opportunity to be a financial success, and I got to define it. And that's the difference. Was. That's the difference right there, because I can say the same thing, except I didn't go to college. I went to the Army. Right. I went to and, the I was the, yeah, and I was the best guy in, in my field, and I got rewarded for it. Yeah. Right. And, and I'll tell you, you know, that's the attitude that we need back. And that's the attitude that the Democrat side of the government has tried to erase from people's yes. minds. Yes. So, yeah, you're in a different place, but you got to pay. You got to. There's a lot of people in that place that understand how to get out of that place and they do it. Right. You know what I mean? It's it's because there's still equal opportunity in this country. You go out and you kick ass and you're going to get paid. Right. For now. We've just trained that out of people where even if you look at, you know, the kids, I mean, it's just a pipeline to go work for somebody else. They don't teach them how to start their own business, how to do their own stuff. And I mean, even my kids, you, you know, what, my stepdaughter, she's working this corporate job. She's working in a uh, in a warehouse, makes good money, good benefits for a big corporation based out of Minnesota. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want her to open a bakery. She loves to cook. Here's your opportunity to build your own thing. And that whole concept just scares the hell out of her. And, and it's like, there was a time in America where scared to fail, uh, scared to fail doesn't know what to do. I mean, it's not that complicated, make good food and people come by it. Right. You know what people I mean? Come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, but for her, just that whole concept of I'm going to go be my own boss. Like it just, it just paralyzes her with terror. And then you look back and it's like, she never learned how to do any of that. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you in 2013, 2014, uh, was my last time of working as a graphic um, contractor for the government. It was the last time. I, I got tired of being fired um, due to overhead cuts. Uh, and that was the time Barack Obama was in, I think, too. But um, uh, And what he did, he had stopped government contracting really bad around that time. And um, I think it was my fourth time in about five or six years of my position being cut. And it's like, I'm t I can't do this. I mean, I, I was driving home. I pulled along the side of the road. I sat on the side of the road and I cried. I was like, I got I got these two kids. You know, I got, I got this house I got to take care of. I am tired of doing it. So then I went home and I was like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to do this radio thing. I'm going to try to do the radio thing. I'm going to try to do the, the podcast thing and stuff. And I took one for one K and we started with war radio and stuff, but I had failed a few times before that. Uh, speaking about um, starting up blogs. I think I started seven blogs and <laughs> after I couldn't finish the first three or four sentences, I was just, 
go and do something else. It's like, you know, I don't know. I, I can't do this. But to me, like y'all said, growing up, it's in us. It's in us. It might not be in the kids today, but it's in us to work hard because you know if you work hard and you and you dedicate yourself to something, uh, it's going to pan out. I mean, we're a good I example know. of that. We're a very good example of that. We started yeah. out and there was 50,000 people doing podcasts when we were started. Yeah. A- a- and over the time, you fired me once, I quit once, but we're still here. <laughs> You know what I mean? We're, we're, it's 2023, Wayne, and you and I, I are freaking still here. Still here. Yep. You watched my hair go white. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking at that. I, I mean, yeah, I remember that. Yep. Yep. I, I, and that's that's the tell sign of staying power. That's exactly right. That's because and I commitment. wanted to keep doing this and you wanted to keep doing it. Exactly. This. Commitment, you know. And yeah, you're right. We have seen people. We've seen many people, people that they're all gone, gone, gone from from the whole political spectrum, too. They're gone. And there's a couple that that uh, succeeded. Not very many, but a couple. Not, yeah, not too many. But I remember, too, that. Uh, again, American dream, but you go out and you work like we have you. You put your feet on the ground. You visit, you talk to, you you hold conversations with. That's how you develop connections and 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 um, uh, co- conversations with people that are just like you. If you decide that you don't want to talk to nobody, you can't make anything work. You're not going to make anything work, and you can't. I had a video on here a while ago where people. We showed you how people had got stuck in their house, and and how the, the it was destroying the air in the house. And stuff. It's like, you know, I'll tell you what I, I got to tell you this, Jason, because Wayne, that party just mentioned about the the connections and everything. Oh yeah, that, that was his side, not mine. <laughs> right, I, I, I'm going to tell he you. He's a social butterfly. Because Wayne probably thinks he he thinks I don't remember any of this stuff, right? But I remember I, now. I don't remember where we were because we were a lot of places. Yeah, we were with thousands of people, mm-hmm. and I remember like seeing Wayne for the first time of that trip. Hey, man, what's happening? How you doing? All right, our booth's over there. Let's let's go over to the booth. It took us six hours to get there because mm-hmm. <laughs> Wayne had to talk to every every. No, Wayne did not. They had to talk to him. Right. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> loves Wayne. We're never going to get the hell over here. <laughs> there was one time. There was one time that we went to CPAC. It was the night before everything had started. We're walking over to find out where we're going. I'm I'm on the phone. I had my head down, and you know I'm I'm like okay, I gotta find it. And so and this big bold hands was in front of me, stopped me, grabbed me by both arms, and and said with a real deep Texas accent. You're that guy with that podcast. <laughs> yeah, I looked That's up. It was Governor Perry. It was Governor Perry. Oh, Perry. nice. That's <laughs> like, yeah, I right. And um, you and I even have you down to be on it. He said, "Yep, I'll show sure be over there. I show sure will." So, I mean, but yeah, that to me, those are the days, man. Those, man, those are days. But I mean, that story you told about how you were at you reach that point in life where you just had to work for yourself. Yeah. You know, I, I think the more we can get America back to that, the better it is. I, I think of myself, my dad had the same job growing up, which I'll end that end this short story with that in a sec. And I remember he gave everything to that company and they would always screw him over, screw him over, screw him over. And so when I went into the corporate world, like I'd work jobs five, six, seven years. And then if a better opportunity came, I'd switch and dad would get mad. Like, why are you doing that? And I'm like, well, these companies don't care anything about you, you know? So if there's a better opportunity, you continue advancing. And then my wife, once the kids got old enough, she's like, quit your job, get out of corporate, find what you do. And now three, four years later, I own my own business and I've got great partners and, and do different things. But, but it's funny. Cause just the week before Christmas, my dad who worked 47 years for his company, got his walking papers. 
47 years. I'm 49. He worked there his entire mm. life, didn't make any money, and they threw him away the week before Christmas like a piece of trash. Yeah. And and, and it, it was funny. I mean, not funny, but my whole life, I'm like, I saw him just screw him over and mess with his pay and don't give him the the thing. And I'm like, Dad, you're smart. And and like a lot of his brothers, like, were entrepreneurs and and I'm like, that's why you don't, you know, that that corporatist society we've created where everybody gives their heart and soul to these businesses that don't give two shits about you. That's I mean, that's foundationally horrible. And the scary part is they're running the government. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I'll tell you, my father gave me some advice that I'm going to pass on. Uh, when I was very young, I was like very I mean, he died when I was 20. So he said, Hutch. He said, you don't, don't go after money. He said, you got to find something that you love to do. Mm -hmm. He said, you're going to be doing it for one third of your life going forward. Yep. Yep. You're going to sleep a third. You're going to work a third at least. And then yep. you'll be off a third. If you find something that you love to do, you're going to be good at it. Yep. And if you're good at it, the money will follow. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I never wanted to be rich. I really honestly I knew, God, never did. I I didn't either. All I wanted was to be able to eat, you know, to be able to enjoy life. I didn't, I don't need a mansion. I don't want a staff. I don't need a whole bunch of people working for me, you know, but that was really good advice, man. To me, to me, the, the not being rich part is something that I think that we can say that we are very, very, um, um, it's, it's probably deep down in the heart that you can, if we said it, you can believe it. You can take it to the bank. Because for me, it's like all I need is to make sure whatever I need, I can get whatever I need. That's it. I don't need to live above my means. I don't need to, like you said, have a house. I was looking at um somebody's house out there in California. They had like I can't eight, believe these people. Eight, eight rooms, nine rooms, <laughs> and, and um ten baths and stuff, and they're not married. But you know they they have the entourage. I'm like, how do you live like that? You know. So I mean, for me, for me, it's like, psh, no, I don't want to be rich. As a matter of fact, you know, I even told, I even told my guys, I don't like money. I really don't. I really don't. If I could just sit, or 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 walk or whatnot, as long as I had internet. If I had that cabin that my that my friend has, my. My distinguished friend, my my distinguished friend from Pennsylvania. If I had a cabin, if and it just had, I mean, if it had heat, if it had internet, and uh, ele electricity, you know, yeah, electricity, I'm fine. Be I mean, because I am a smoker out back, I'm fine. And it's got a well. That's it. I'm fine. I don't, I mean, I don't need nothing now. I wake up, hear the bird, tweet, tweet, tweet. Hey, how you doing? Hey, bye bar. Hi, hello, hello. You know, I'll be talking to the deer because they're going to be food on Sunday. And, you know, I'm like, you know, this is it. This is, this is, this is what I want. But, you know, when you're looking at the, the youngsters today, which they haven't been taught. I don't think they've been taught right or wrong. I don't think that, they, I mean, and I'm really not, and they really haven't been taught the Bible as in where, what we were taught when we were growing up, because you just said, the guy said, I don't believe in the Bible. You know, the Bible said, well, that, um, if America has turned from God, then a whole lot of the things that are happening has to be the result of that. Or 100%. at least that's what I, that's what we were taught. You know, you turn away from them and you get what you get. Just look at the things that they're doing. Yeah. It's godless stuff. It's all yep. godless stuff. What civilized society would champion murdering their own babies, man? It's right. almost like they're testing them. It's almost like they're testing them to see if he's going to do something terrible. You know, uh, no. I'm not saying a flood. It could be invasion. It could be more balloons over the head. You know, it could be. And 
we're going to talk about some other stuff, but this was the main thing. You mentioned freedom earlier. I don't know. I mean, I look, we <laughs> we talk about freedom and we and we throw that out there. I don't know anybody that's free. If you really put the stones and the sticks down and you sit across from me and I look you dead in your eye, I don't really know if anybody in this whole world is free. We all think dance to the beat of somebody's drum. Think about this. Think if, if you saw a news report, and this is about the Constitution and how phony it is. You saw a news report that the U.S. Air Force dropped bombs on Syria. That would not surprise you. That's illegal. Right. That's Ill Nobody declared war on Syria. Yep. You know, but yet we do it every year. And we have an entire Congress that condones it. We've got military generals that take an oath to uphold the Constitution that execute it. I mean, that's pretty, that's pretty telling. Well, and it's funny when you say freedom and, I mean, back to your abortion statement earlier, Hutch, I'll take the abortion thing back a step further. What happened to the point when you had sex with somebody it was special and important and it was somebody yeah. that you wanted to raise a family. And it wasn't called sex. It was called making love. Yeah, you made love yeah. to somebody with the purpose of creating a baby. <laughs> Wayne's like, do we have to go down this road, man? I'm just, yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying, everybody wants to talk about abortion. I just wish we got to the point where people weren't uh, true and it wasn't with somebody they wanted. I agree. I'm dizzy. I I remember that. I mean, what's the, what's, the, what's the biggest story of the century? Epstein Island. I mean, and when I, we talk yeah. about freedom, we can't even have that conversation that we want to have on most of these platforms right now because they would hit the delete button. Yeah, that 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 that, that Epstein that Epstein thing. Um, I woke up I woke up this morning. I was and I saw that they were showing the list, and I was like. Hmm. You want to show it, man? You, you got five thousand, six thousand people already showing it. I, look, I'll just talk about China, man. I, <laughs> it's like all oh, that stuff is out there. They didn't gone through it. People haven't even slept overnight. Forget it. Uh, and and honestly, I I read something where a lot of the people that are in it, they ain't even gonna get charged. None of them are going to get charged. Gonna the get FBI has had logs and videos, and Epstein worked for the FBI, right? That's yeah, what I heard. Or Mossad, I mean, or both. But the fact is, they've had all this information since 2019. If yeah. anybody was going to get charged, they were going to get charged. The best case for this expose, which I would encourage you to go on Twitter, there's a lot of great information. Like Laura Loomer, I think, has given a really good breakdown. Shout out to the friend of the show. Uh, but none of these people are getting charged. None of these people are going to jail. None of these people. And even if you look at how the media is covering it for people that don't watch podcasts like us, if you look, MSNBC had a picture of Trump and Epstein yeah, unbelievable. In, in the headline, the Trump Epstein connection has been debunked. It was debunked in the documents. Uh, Trump cut off Epstein in the late nineties when he said he started like hitting on young girls, he's like, you're, you're done. He barred him from Mar-a-Lago. But if you go on any of the mainstream media so sources, other than some of the like Fox or whatnot, like all everybody's, every Epstein story has a picture of Trump with Epstein. It's, it's you know, they, they ought to be held cr criminally liable for what mm. they've done. I, I want you, you speak about Fox news, Fox news mm. last night, Jesse waters brought on a tarot card reader to see if President Trump was going to win or not. Are you serious? I swear to God. Pulled one card, and it was like the card of death. Not death. I don't, I don't. Okay, okay, all right. He's going to lose, basically. It's like he, people that's not. I'm telling you, Fox News is television for stupid people. <laughs> I mean, they're playing you. Oh, 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 and guess what? And, guess what? You. and when they... And when they lose their job or they leave their job, they're just going to create a podcast you know and uh, and say, guess what? I was reading the script. I was wrong. But this is what I really think. Tell me what somebody tweeted. Okay. Yeah, that's exactly what I believe. I, I, I believe exactly what I just saw in the tweet and right there. Yeah. 
Um, well, and when's the media going to come out and admit all the stuff they lied about this morning? Last court. night after the Epstein stuff came out, and this morning I was tweeting about it a little bit earlier, but I, I went back to revisit Pizzagate of all the original conspiracy theories. And yeah, you did. Only, did, you, did you really? I did. Yeah. And here's yeah, what's yeah, ironic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, 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 yeah, that, 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 that pepperoni's kind of good, isn't it? I'm uh, just saying we can't talk about it on these platforms, <laughs> but go check out my Twitter no. thread. Hey, I was You're doing reading I, it now that you I, know what you know. <laughs> in a while, man. I was doing my show last night and the Epstein thing came up. Uh-huh. And somebody said something like on page 1392, this guy did this over here. And I was like, hey, I know a guy that probably read all of them pages. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes, you do. <laughs> uh, here's right. Look, about about two, two or three, three o'clock in the morning. morning. Yeah. Right. Jimmy <laughs> Kimmel. <laughs> that one is not real, by the way, isn't it? No, he's mad. Well, he's mad, boy. He is mad that his name even got put in it. Actually, that was uh, that was funny because Aaron Rodgers came out and Colin Rugg had tweeted the Rogers clip <coughs> and the, and I know Colin great dude. And then, uh, and then I saw Kimmel reply to him and I sent it to him. He's like, what the hell? Yeah. And then it became a nationwide news story. Oh my the, God. Um, I mean, some of the stuff we already knew, we already knew about Clinton. We, we, we know, look, him and his wife have had an open marriage. Uh, he, he does this thing with the young people. With the young girls, and she does her thing with the women, the Muslim women. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> whatever happened, old Uma? I don't know, man. Uma, Uma took her child and just went off, didn't she? she oh, that's right. She has a half Jewish child, doesn't she? She's not, <laughs> yeah. they're not welcome in Saudi Arabia anymore. <laughs> she's probably on. She's probably on an island somewhere. <laughs> she's not she's not welcome in her own nation and she's not welcome in the other nation. It's like she's just a vagabond. Can you imagine if we had a real media that actually dug into that? Oh, whole, that'd be so good. Yeah. That whole Anthony Weiner whom uh getting married to yeah. Yeah, yeah the, the whole media, thing. Do you think the people in the media, like Jesse Waters and Brett Bear and, and all these people, do you think they know that they're destroying the nation? No. I'll bet they don't either. I bet they don't. They think they're on some kind of righteous cause, and they're steadily destroying our nation, man. It's a it's a cry and shame. They ought to all they ought to all be held accountable for the lies, the generations of lies. You know, you know who is the big the big person that probably is responsible for, is the editor. Sure, the corporate people. Yeah, is the editor and 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 the, and and the next door legal department, which is next door. Can we say this? No, we can't say. It? Okay. Oh, oh well. and the agencies that that are supposed to protect us are in cahoots with the enemy. Yeah, I mean, right. even the Muslim Brotherhood, man. Um, yeah. Well, and all these all these media pundits at these big channels are owned by multi billion dollar corporation. They're all part of that machine. That machine I talked about earlier. That that's this corporate conglomerate that we're run by. And no, these guys don't care because they know the better they read the script. The more money uh, they on that before you hit the clip on on that thing that we were talking about before on Spreecast, mm-hmm. so, something happened on that show that stunned me. We had a guy on there, and you've heard of him. I'm not going to mention his name, but you've heard of him. But his credentials are he was a former CIA officer, and he was NYPD's international security agent, and now he's on out in the media. And I asked him. I, this was right around the time where. Uh, all these Muslim Brotherhood people were showing up in Congress in the Department of Homeland Security and things like that. And Huma Abedin was big. And I asked him, I said, what, what do you know about the about all these Muslim Brotherhood people that have infiltrated the administration and, and the agencies? Yeah. He said, I don't know anything about that. Yeah. <laughs> all right. I don't, I don't know any of them. I mean, I'm talking, I, I, and I had to call him out. I'm like, yeah. what about Muhammad Alibieri? What about Huma Abedin? What about Suhail Khan? What about all these people? And this guy just had a look in his eyes, like I'm not talking about those guys. And and and, and the thing is, he's still he's, he's still, still out there. Yes, he is. And um, he's a person that people run to for expert yep. information. 
you know, but he couldn't, but Hutch had him that night. Even though, even if he might have known about it. And I wasn't was, trying uh, to get him. I wanted to no, answer. No, no, it was a regular question, right? Yeah. yeah. But it, no, no, my, it took me years to understand that. Yeah, I remember that. But but then again, it's like that now. There's just a whole lot it of is. people that um, have a whole lot of these podcasts that don't know what they're doing. They know that all they have to do is say a couple words and they got people hooked, but they don't know what they're doing. And you know, another thing about podcasts too, podcasts, we love them, we do them, all three of us. We're, we try to be careful too. But you you have to be careful with your podcast because podcasts can be dangerous. And the reason why I say podcasts can be dangerous is because if you get somebody that they don't, don't know what they're doing, they're going to have you fighting in the Civil War while they're, they're sitting back eating popcorn. And they're out there, man. Okay. They're going to be sitting back telling you to charge, and they're going to ha- have their feet up on their recliner watching you get arrested or, or whatnot. And, and then they're going to be like, well, I mean, I, I really didn't think they were going to do that. Once y'all buy a mug from me and, uh, you know, we're, we'll see where that goes. War. Listen, <laughs> um, I would be really crazy not to talk about this. It happened. I guess it happened this week. I've never seen anything like it before, but um, it happened in Nevada. <laughs> the flying tackle. A taste of something else because I just can't with that history. In accordance with the laws of state of this court. Oh, 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 hey, oh, hey, oh, hey, 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 the situation here is this: the guy in the black, the guy in the black suit. At first. I don't know what he's trying to hit, though. Yeah, that, yeah, that, that overhead. That's all that, man. That's like some Pakistani shot or something. Yeah! Get off her. Oh, you're good, you're good, stop. Don't do this. Can I suggest a sidearm officer? I know, right? Don't y'all have tasers here? I gotta say, that guy should be playing in the NFL, like blocking field goals or something. Like, did you see that jump? Yeah, that yeah that that jump. That's that, that jump. That's that ten to twenty jump. You're right. Yeah, his bail you know, was denied. And look at this. Whoa! I'll Do tell you, you what. I mean, if you've never been to court, that they sit up. They don't sit on the same level. They sit up. So for him to cl- he's still clearing above, he has some hops. Look at he's his feet; they're it. level with the desk. <laughs> oh, he cleared it. I, like, I tell you what, I've seen professional wrestlers that can't get that kind. Yeah, of Yeah, yeah, you're right about that. Yeah, you you're definitely right about that. Now the serious part of that story is if he was in several other courts, he would have got probation. He would be doing that to somebody that's in his world, right? Not mm-hmm. a judge. Yeah, that or, guy needs to be off the damn street. Or in in some courts, by the time he was in the air, somebody the judge would have pulled out his gun and shot him while he was in in the air. And I'm talking I mean, because those Texas judges don't play that. Um, but you know, I I was like, the more I watched, it, I was like, why'd you put your head down, woman? Don't put your head down. Keep your head up, because you know she. She was talking to him, and then she said something, and then she put her head down. And I appreciate that, but I think it's time that he gets a taste of something else because I just can't down. The in accordance with the laws of state of Nevada, this court. Is- yeah, but it was over by then. It was over by then. Um, the judge, the judge is doing fine. She she wanted her clerks and everything to know that she was doing fine. Um, dude is probably going to get a life. Well, no, 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 no. We're living in liberal America. He's probably going to get about an extra 10, 15 years for that. You know. He won't even get that. That dude will be out by the weekend, man. No, no, no. You don't hit no white woman like that. 
<laughs> I don't think it has anything to do with the white. I think it's a judge. Uh, I don't know. You, I mean, I've seen some men go after men judges. That that and you know that, you know. But this right here, that's going after a woman, and you going after a woman like that, and you heard pounds of flesh. I don't. I don't know whether she had a a mic on or not, but. He was hitting flesh. You know, like, God, oh. Yeah, I hope, I hope she's okay. I hope she's okay. I saw that I saw that yesterday, and everybody was talking about that on the um, stories and stuff. So I was like, let me bring that on. Talk talk about that. So um, kind of briefly talked about the Epstein list. Uh, we talked about America. Um, and... Less than two weeks, we got Iowa coming up. Wow. I, the the GOP caucuses, and um, really honestly, this is this is what we know to be a fact. Polls are showing that Donald Trump has a strong lead over the other candidates, and has remained the front runner. Um, uh, like in football and basketball, they have a saying for this. Uh, from from the beginning to the end, he's I mean, he hasn't been behind. He's been on top from from the beginning to the end. So uh I uh I I do worry uh because I think he was in front in 2016. And uh who won that? Not him. <laughs> No, 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 no. They, they, Wasn't they, it Cruz? Cruz won that one. I think it was Cruz. Because Cruz did something to uh, uh, Carson. Cruz's yeah, people did something to stop Carson. Voting. Yeah, stop yeah. voting or something. Yeah, I was yeah. a Carson guy at that time. Yeah, yeah. He might be VP. You might have an opportunity to be a Carson guy again. I don't think so. I hope not. Yeah. He, now we need a boat. You need a warrior, man. You need a warrior yeah. to be vice president. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody that can take up the mantle if something happens to President Trump. Yeah. Then Ben Carson ain't that guy. He's a great guy, but he's not that guy. Well, yeah. I got to yeah. say, and when we're talking about Iowa, this is where I'm going to give my repeated warning for the MAGA representatives in Iowa. There, I, I think last election, 900,000 people voted for President Trump. If all 900,000 people vote, President Trump wins in a landslide. Caucuses aren't like that. Each county has their own thing at the fire station where people go. and and But where the DeSantis campaign has done a great job is they've got a lot of the local politician endorsements. And they have captains in 1,500 of the 1,600 counties in Iowa. So those are people that are going to be at the fire station to make sure they're calling their friends and neighbors to come to the fire station to help support DeSantis. Cause it's not where you show up and vote and leave. Like right. it's like a little meeting and people yeah, get moved around and, yeah. and that kind of thing. But, and that's why, like I say, if everybody makes it, it'll be a landslide, but all you need is one cold snap in Iowa and the Trump people think, Oh, he's up by 50 points. He doesn't need to. And then, and then troubles are brewing. I think to their credit, I think Iowa, and you could see by how tough they fought to keep the first in the nation primary uh, or caucus, whatever you want to call it. But uh, I think they realize how pivotal and important they are to the future of this nation. I hope so. I have to give it to them. I would warn that there's a, something afoot. Democrats uh, are strongly behind Nikki Haley. Yep. Just remember that. Don't ever mention her name. Alongside I, President Trump's, don't ever. I haven't that. seen. I haven't seen that. I have. Oh yeah. I mean, I mean, I've heard. Globalist, heard us globalist, talk about it. globalist types. Hmm. They're not all Republicans. The Uniparty end of the yeah. Democrat Party, the corporate end of the Democrat Party. Yep. I mean, the I big, think the they big view money Nick guys, the, the people that bought her one point two million dollar house. For right. Her. Well, I mean, to be honest. I've always said that she was dangerous. Me too. I mean, I, I mean, and dangerous, dangerous in the point that if she ran, I always thought that she would, that she probably would be the first Republican um, 
woman to be president. And the only reason why I used to think about that in the past, I thought about that before um, before Trump made her UN ambassador. When he made her UN um, UN ambassador, I was like, God darn, that's it. Um, that was just the cream on the cake. I was like, now, now all she has to do is run. Now I didn't think she was going to run against Trump, and because she said as much. Well, I think it's still the House Cards thing. I mean, I've always said it's House Cards thing. They are trying to get DeSantis out of there. I mean, and she's she's already pulled ahead of DeSantis in New Hampshire, and she's a, and she damn sure going to be in front of him and in, in front of South Carolina. So, to me, he's on life support. Um, oh, DeSantis, DeSantis is cooked. Yeah, DeSantis. He didn't um, go to any other states, right? DeSantis right. and, needs to win or have a strong showing in Iowa. Or he's over because New well, Hampshire, he probably loses back yeah, well, to Nick. I think that if if anybody other than Trump wins in Iowa and New Hampshire, the quote unquote Republican Party, meaning the MAGA people, are going to revolt. I mean, not not in a violent way, maybe, but it, it's just going to be. It's like you can't sit there and tell me that and expect me to smile. You know, the guy is so far ahead. I, I, I don't I don't know any DeSantis fans, you know, or any any Nikki Haley. It's all I, see him. I, I, I don't know. see I don't see any Nikki I see him Haley. Him in, I see him in the media. Right. I don't see any Nikki Haley fans on social media. <clears throat> what I don't think what people um I think that there's a problem with many social media accounts thinking that America is Twitter or America is Facebook and it's not no. America is off to the side, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, they're all echo chambers of, 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 of videos and, 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 and memes and stuff like that. So when I hear, uh, uh, <laughs> uh when I see somebody tweet on Twitter, the majority of Americans say, well, no, you're talking about the majority of the people on Twitter. You know, I mean, and and not even that, but you're talking about the majority of the people that follow you that agree with you say that. But have you gone to New Hampshire? Have you talked to the people in New Hampshire? Have you talked to the people in Iowa? Because honestly, to me, I I think Trump is gonna win Iowa. I do. I also think now I think Haley's gonna come in second. And I said to my I said if uh, DeSantis comes in third in Iowa, he 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 can't afford to go to New Hampshire. It, go home, go home after that, because you say that you went to ninety nine counties. You put your foot in ninety nine counties. You got the endorsement of the governor. You got the endorsement of the evangelical leader. You got the endorsement of th these people, and you come in third. You got to pack up and go home. Now, uh, for Nikki Haley, Nikki Haley is not, and I'm not. <laughs> honestly, it's a smart move. She she she's in Iowa, she's in New Hampshire, and she's in South Carolina. God dog it. Some there's, of, a, there's a strong constitutional argument to be made that she's not eligible to run for president. I heard I heard about Anchor that baby. <laughs> But nobody is pushing that through. And they never will. They didn't. They won't. They don't do it. They didn't do it with Obama. They John didn't McCain. do it with with Hil John McCain with Hillary Clinton's yeah. uh, destruction of the emails. None yeah. of these people were allowed to be. Hell, Jack Smith isn't authorized to be a prosecutor. Yep. We're living in make believe land. Yeah. And I will pin it back on the media. Well, yeah, and maybe. and once again with these primaries too. It is all about turnout. I mean, if you take the bluest blue area, you take the bluest blue state out there, if every registered Republican voted in the last election, Trump would have won that state. And that's why in Iowa, like I say, people in Iowa, MAGA supporters, don't take anything for granted. Vote like your life depends on it. And if y'all show up, it'll be easy. Ron DeSantis will go away by the end of New Hampshire. And then we just got to deal with Nikki Haley and hope Trump doesn't pick her for VP. And then we got to worry about the general and the vote stealing. Yep. And that's going to be a mission we're going to have to be involved in this time. Yeah. 
And I mean, I really, I really wish that people were were really listening to me and not thinking that I was negative during 2020 because in 2020 I was like, there's something wrong. And I was like, kept on coming on the show. I was like, you know, President Trump. President Trump is not saying that they're going to steal the election just be, just to say it. In February, he was saying it. You know, and people were like, yeah, we had a rally, we had a rally. And President Trump was like, be careful because he might try to steal this election. Yeah, take something good, take something good. I was like, what are y'all doing? First off, I, first off, I got mad at MAGA because I always believe that... Um, I always believed that MAGA should have been knocking on doors and growing Trump support. I always believed that. Uh, because you never rest on your laurels, which Republicans usually do. But to me, I was like, man, y'all better watch out. I'm telling you, uh, something ain't right. And then when it came down to them doing the um, the mail-in ballots, I was like, something ain't right about that. They're starting to mandate masks again in blue places. Mm-hmm. Oh, and, oh, and I bet you there's going to be um, those signs at the front of um, voting rules to wear them, too. Well, you can't vote unless you... Well, don't say it in the Constitution. They don't say I have to wear a mask to vote. Um, yeah, but uh, she, yeah, she's, she's in um, Iowa and New Hampshire and New Jersey. And Chris Christie. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Turns out he's a liar. <laughs> Chris Christie is like eating his donut. By the way, I ain't voting for him. I lied. I ain't voting for him. If he wins, I ain't voting. And if he That's gets convicted, fine, I will not pardon him. Let him go to jail. That's fine, Chris. I mean, nobody. Look, you're just one of those kids that just, you know. You got nobody now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Break south now, but yeah, that's that's what's going on in in Iowa. Uh, less than two weeks again on the fifteenth. As a matter of fact, eleven days, eleven days from here. Um, the you got GOP, Carol Davis. She's gonna be at the fire station with bells on. Carol, bring your friends, Carol. bring your neighbors. Oh, Good deal. God love um, you. Uh, the GOP that wasn't supposed to have any uh, debates with liberal media, uh, I guess they changed their mind too. See, everything's changing, and people are leaving Congress. And I, I told y'all, I, I I just don't trust these Republicans leaving. I I just don't. No, you know, I, how soon will we're the House minority? <laughs> very soon, right? Very soon. I Can mean, you imagine and, and, that? and it's done by ourselves. We right. did it by ourselves. Right. You couldn't have just imagine. held your nose for a couple more years and let Santos keep voting and then get rid of him. You had to get rid of him in the middle of the thing. Let me ask no, you but something. I mean, we, we joke about giving up the House majority, but literally. We did. Cool. Right. I mean, Almost. my guess is by April, Democrats have majority in the House. At the if late. you look at what's happening in New York with redistricting, I listened to a New York sen- or representative say, we're going to lose this before the election. You know, because of redistricting and things like that, stuff going on. I mean, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what the GOP needs to do. Look at it before I go there. Kevin McCarthy, the highest ranking Republican, had zero honor and resigned instead of finishing out his term. Yeah. That's you remember a the house. guy. You remember the house. It's two effing years. You know what right. I mean? You couldn't wait. Right. Couldn't wait. Couldn't wait until November. The guy, the guy that's going to, the Ohio representative, he's going to go be a president of a liberal college. And and Young when Stone I State. heard that, when I heard that, I was like, wait a minute. You ran because you wanted to make a difference in the country. And now all of a sudden you want to lead to be president of a, of a college. Wow. Unbelievable. Wow. Well, and I think too, it's ridiculous is like, I look at myself when I left my corporate job, I had a pretty high job and I had decided in the summer I was going to leave. And I was in retail. Retail is important at Christmas. I went to my boss and I said, okay, I'm going to be leaving. Many people would think, hey, you bail before Christmas. Why put yourself through it? But I said, no, the honorable thing to do is I'm going to stick it out through Christmas and I'm going to leave. You know, you let me know when. 
you want me to leave late December when it's kind of over or January or whatnot? We worked out a deal and I worked my ass off right up until my last day. And these members of the house, you voted for them and it's only two years. That's all they serve is two years. And these guys saw. can't finish their terms. Like that's ridiculous. You said you said you work up until when? Uh, she picked the date and it was right after the week between Christmas and New Year's. Don't, the only reason why I'm smiling is because when, when we got out orders, <laughs> we got short, we got short items. We need one word. <laughs> yeah. I, look, I'm out next Tuesday and you really didn't see me until Friday. No, I actually trained my replacement and did the whole thing. I, I was traveling. I'm talking about the military, by the way. Oh, right. Yeah. I'll tell you what the GOP needs to do. I don't know if you guys have seen. <clears throat> there's an activist in Chicago. I guess he's pretty popular. Uh, I saw a, a, an article with him in it, and he basically promised they were going to turn Chicago red. And I'm thinking, get to Chicago. If right. you're a Republican in Illinois, go there. They're begging you to come see them. They've been yeah. begging him before uh, 2012. This is true. You, you remember that black dude that we had on? Yeah. Uh, he, man, he was man, he was boisterous, wasn't he? He was he, this he was guy. He knew he knew what he was talking about. Chicago is a literally democratic racial segregated city. Yep. It is segregated by the interstate. And that guy laid it all out for us. He's like, oh, no, there's there's two Chicago's, man. Yeah. He's like, there's this, and you can't get to the other one because there's an interstate in the way. Mm -hmm. You know, and but, but this guy's like supporting Donald Trump and asking Donald Trump, please come talk to us. I hope he's got the message because, uh, and I think he did, because you see his strategy is to start flipping blue states. Yep. And to do that, you got to go to these corrupt cities to do it. I was going to ask you when I saw that. I was like, do you think that's... Um, <clears throat> I know back in the day, that probably would have been a very smart uh, very smart strategy. But do you think he, he needs to shore up uh, uh, his own? Because in 2020, Wisconsin was supposed to go Trump. Arizona was supposed to go Trump. The key to these places is the cities. If if he takes Chicago, he takes Illinois. Yep. Right. Right. If but, he takes Pittsburgh and Philadelphia, he takes Pennsylvania. Right. I don't. I don't care what they do. See, I was going to say if I could give President Trump and his campaign some advice, mm -hmm. I would have the inner city barnstorming tour. Damn right. Where I would, where I would take the top ten liberal cities and say, this week I'm going to New York City. I'm going to Chicago, I'm going to Philadelphia, I'm going to Atlanta, I'm going to San Francisco, you know, just list out those cities. I agree 100%. And, I, and I'll tell you what, if it does nothing else, it's going to show the people that live in those cities millions of MAGA people. Oh, right. And if it was, if you just did it for like a week, you just take one week and say, I'm just going to do a barnstorming tour, you could hit all these places and you could... You could get great reach. It would be media coverage. You know, he could, to. yeah, he would come up with some slogan like taking back the inner city or taking back the, you know, giving America hope, something. I mean, they're marketers. They can come up with something. <laughs> and and I think that's because here's the thing. The people in the inner cities are starting to realize we need less government handouts and we need an opportunity to get out of this. More mess. makers and less takers. Right. Yeah. And no. I mean, there's still a lot of people that think. Like, hey, I uh, some people still believe they need government support to get where they need to be. But now that they see all that support going to these immigrants, they're like, no, no, no. Like, I don't that want was for me. <laughs> yeah, I don't want those resources going. To, like, they're starting to make the connection that those resources yeah, are, are going to other people. It's so, right you know? in their face. Right now, um, it seems like uh, uh, we're. You know, Chip, Chip Roy, Chip Roy, uh, your boy had something to say yesterday. Uh, where's that? Chip Soy. Chip Soy. 
Let me um my orcas. My orcas also had something to say that I couldn't believe that was coming out of his mouth. Um and when I when I say that, I know I should believe that he's saying it, but for him to say it puts a whole new face on that monster anyway. Listen to this. We will not have the resources to perform our jobs as fully and completely as we could do so. Uh, we need them now. And that is why uh, the president submitted a supplemental uh, funding package quite some time ago. We need additional personnel uh, to advance our security at the border. We need technology to advance our fight uh, against fentanyl. We need additional asylum officers to really accelerate the asylum adjudication process. That dude should be under arrest. Audio we have wrong. a broken immigration system. That is the one single fact about which everyone agrees. And our administration is focused on solutions. And we're really pleased to join a bipartisan group of senators who are similarly focused on solutions. We have a broken immigration system. That is the one single fact about which everyone agrees. When they're at the border, they're going to see the magnitude of the problem and why we have said now for about three decades that our uh, broken immigration system is in desperate need of legislative reform. The fact that people can stay here for six years before their asylum case is adjudicated is a powerful example of how broken our immigration system is and has been for so long. We have a backlog of cases of about three million in immigration court proceedings. That wow. has been building year over year over year for wow. decades now. When they're at the border, they're going to see the magnitude of the problem and why we have said now for about three decades that our uh, broken immigration system is in desperate need of legislative reform. That's the contempt, the contempt yeah. these people yeah. have for Americans, man. Um, yeah. Yeah. The border was fixed completely three yep. years ago. You yep. suckers broke it. Not 30 Man. years. Right. Three exactly. years. Exactly. Three years. And here's what's funny, though. Hmm? He's telling the truth while lying at the same time. Because the policies the Biden administration put in place created an influx where we said we would let everybody through the turnstile. And then whenever you get your court date, we deported, I think the number's 200,000 people this year's all, and we're letting an unlimited quantity of people in. He's telling the truth that they don't have enough resources to get them all processed That's because not the, they shouldn't be processing that many people. That supplemental is not about the border. That supplemental is about Ukraine money. Right. It's about Ukraine money, Israel money, and some other money. I ran something. The, the, the border part of it is those, those, those congressmen, because the Senate will do it. But right. the, the people in the House have said, you close the border, you get nothing. Mm -hmm. and God bless them for that. I hope they stick to their guns. Here is um, Chip. Oh, it's, it's Chip Roy here from Texas 21. And I want to applaud Speaker Johnson for taking a large block of my Republican colleagues down to the southern border uh, to demonstrate the importance of that issue and why it's an existential threat to the safety I thought it was of, being of all Americans, but particularly Texans. Uh, frankly, and he can just shove it down the throat of the president and Alejandro Mayorkas who are trying to blame Texas and are trying to obfuscate from doing their duty. But I'm in Washington. I'm not on the trip. I've been there. I've been there dozens of times. I was on the phone yesterday with ranchers and local law enforcement, local leaders, and they all told me the same thing. Shut down the border or shut down the government. That's it. We have the tools at our disposal. Article 1, the Congress. We're supposed to check an out-of-control executive <laughs> branch. Use the power of the purse to stop funding it. Because you know what? If you fund it, you own it. That's it. We have to choose whether or not we're going to fight for the people that we came to Washington to fight for. We've got to choose whether we're going to use all of this as an excuse and then campaign on the issue rather than doing what we can do right now if mm -hmm. we choose to. I don't care if the majority's thin. A united Republican conference in the House of Representatives has the most power of anybody in this entire country. And it is this Republican conference that is the only check the only check. We are the only people in the world who can stop this president and this administration from endangering the people of our country. So my job is to be here 
and to get our job done for the people I represent. So I'm here working with my staff, trying to figure out every tool at our disposal to make sure that in the coming two weeks, as we head into the end of funding of government, that we stop funding the tyranny that is undermining our freedom. We stop funding a DHS at odds with our uh, security and our well-being in Texas, and that we use the power of the purse that was given to us to do our job. That's why I'm here. When my colleagues get back, I hope we will unite like we did when we passed HR2, like we did when we passed CAPS last year on the debt ceiling. When we unite, we have all the power in the world if we do our job. Thank you and God bless. Yeah, I understand why he did that because he didn't go. And he had already put out, you know, it was a stunt. But I guess he kind of cleaned that up to, to put that out, you know, hey, Congratulations to the people that are going down there. Thank God for you. But, um, you know, I'm here. And, you know, we. when you get back, let's go ahead and talk about it. You know what I'm let, saying? Let me just remind the audience uh, that the last 40 times, the House Republicans funded it. Yeah. Now, I have two thoughts. Thought one, I have solved the Chip Roy riddle. And when I say this, it's going to make perfect sense to you guys. Chip Roy is Trey Gowdy. Absolutely. That that's all it is. When when you hear Chip Roy speak and you think about how you feel about Trey Gowdy now, where it's like, oh, that guy got up, said a bunch of stuff, never did nothing. That is Chip mm -hmm. Roy. And once I once I made that mental connection, I'm like, Chip Roy it no hurts, longer though. frustrates me. I I'm understand gonna, exactly what he's doing. I'm going to break a bunch of people's hearts in the audience as well. Jim Jordan. Right. Trey Gowdy. Same thing. Same thing. Yeah. I know and, and for this not funding the government, they're going to fund the government, folks. They're going to fund it. You're definitely going to fund it. Maybe it'll be, yeah. you'll get a week out of it where maybe they don't. They got they're to because, because if there's one thing that they have been constant on, the Republicans have been constant on, and and, and I remember when I was a Democrat, uh, they live by the polls. Yep. They also they will the never polls. they will never refuse to fund the military or the FBI. They won't do it. They never will do it. And they won't cut entitlements. No. They won't cut entitlements. No matter no matter how much they talk about it and how much they try to scare Democrats with it, they're not going to cut entitlements. And I'll tell you what, you know, and, and I hope I'm wrong on this. Man, please let me be wrong on and this. And they should cut entitlements. But well, they got to rearrange them, yeah. But you've got a you've got a society that'll vote because of that. I know. That, that's like why they won't cut entitlements. Rush Limbaugh said it in his first book. As soon as the voters realize they can vote for money from themselves, it's over. <laughs> it, it's funny because that was probably one of the most profound things Rush Limbaugh ever said. Yeah. And if you, you know, we say always follow the money. That's one of the rules on the Wayne Dupree show. If you think of that and then layer that onto the campaign promises on the left, it all makes perfect sense. Yeah. Why they did Joe Biden want to forgive college ever, debt? Ever since Franklin Delano Roosevelt, their favorite president, yep, yep. he figured out how to buy votes. Right. You know, and, and I'll tell you, my point was, is I don't think Speaker Mike Johnson's up to it. I think the same way about Mike Johnson as I do about Ben Carson. Great, outstanding guy. Going to get his ass whooped in the playground. Sessions. Yeah. Him too. Sessions. Sessions. I, that's one thing I didn't agree to President Trump starting off his administration and putting Sessions in at the DOJ. I was like, shouldn't have did that. And people are like, oh, he's playing 3D chess. I know, but he's wrong. There's wrong move. That's the wrong move. I had high hopes for that guy. Keep, keep him in the Senate. Nope. Put him in there. And what do you do inside of three months? I got to recuse myself. From me and DOJ. What? Are you, what? Where are you going? Because I, I can't let that tape come out. Well, I gotta <laughs> say that's the that's the tough thing is whoever you throw into these jobs, they've yeah. gotta be crystal. I mean, they gotta be clean as a whistle, and they gotta understand what's coming after them. <laughs> I mean, think right. of Gen think of General Flynn. He took the job, they had him run out before he even took the job. Yeah. And, and for many people, especially black conservatives that wanted a job, 
in the Trump administration. Many of them were turned away, not by Trump himself. They they were turned away by turned away by rents. Yep. Glad and you got the name RNC. right. Yeah. By the RNC. Because well, them and also the media, because when the media found out that such and such was going to get a job or they were thinking about getting a job, some people call it doxing or whatnot like that, but their life story, news reports start coming out. It's like, that's okay. I ain't all into that. You know, I'm, I want to keep my privacy to myself, you know, um, and, 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 you know, that's. That's what it is. DOJ sues Texas over law permitting state immigration enforcement. Wow. Wake up, America. The U.S. government is suing states' rights. <laughs> you know, the states U.S. government, the, the same government that framed General Flynn? There you go. There you go. Um, Ex-CBP commissioner has told the GOP if you don't get the border straight. If you don't get the legislation passed, voters are going to hold you responsible in 2024. Guess what? Voters are going to hold you responsible in 2024 anyway. But that's kind of what I meant when I said about if somebody besides Trump wins Iowa. Somebody besides Trump wins Iowa, every Republican loses. Right. Mm -hmm. Because I'm done. (laughs) I ain't even going to. I'm serious. I mean, what's the point? Right. (laughs) <laughs> maybe I'll go out and vote Democrat <laughs> you know? I mean don't do it because you know you know the GOP still got Kennedy it. you still got Kennedy <laughs> <laughs> GOP's behind it you know so you Man. Watch, what you do. watch what you do Rana but I said uh, again though I wanted him to win Iowa. I, I do. I wanted him to win Iowa. Me too. But, but I remember what happened in 2016, and he still won. So I don't like um, Nikki Haley. Nikki Haley came out and said, because she already knows she's not going to win Iowa. Nikki Haley right. said, told, told New Hampshire, you had you are the first state to correct what Iowa is getting ready to do. <laughs> she was, <laughs> and don't, look, don't, don't take Take New Hampshire with a grain of salt. Right. New Hampshire Republicans are worse than freaking Pennsylvania Republicans. <laughs> the liberal, liberal, they're terrible. Yeah, they're, they're horrible. Well, here's what's sad is a lot of those Republicans are still living in the world we all lived in in 2014, where they think the Republican Party's on their side. And I think they're insulated. I think they have people that block them from the truth. Right. You know, and, and by the way, to New Hampshire Republicans, I'm talking about elected officials right. and, prof- and professional Republicans. I'm not talking about normal people. Right. Right. But can I mean, we just say Trump wins easy in Iowa and then puts Nikki away in New Hampshire? Think, And then that is such a game changer for the next election. Because how, what have we what have they spent between the two of them? Like three hundred million dollars. He watch him come out, watch him come repossess Nikki Haley's house. <laughs> but I mean, seriously, I, I think that's the number. I'd have to add it up. But I think Ron's in for 200 million, and I think Nikki's in for 100 million. What could we have done with 300 million dollars building, yeah. you know, vote by mail, voter registration, all that, all that stuff? I mean, it's such an epic waste of money. Again, yeah. I think the RNC should be replaced. Right. I think I think MAGA ought to start their own corporation. Should have yep. done it a long time ago. You're right. We should have. Should have done it a long time. We need to time we need ago. to put that in a dustbin of history. That's the Whigs. Yeah. The Republican yep. Party is a failure for American patriots. Yep. Yep. And Never thought I would say it. Never thought I would say it though. Me either. I I didn't see this coming when I left the Dem Party in 2007. Um, and all those parties that um that Hutch talks about the Whig Party and. Um, all those other parties that have gone by the wayside. They're always on our side. Exactly. It's always on the other side of the Democrat and the Democrats. As I the said, Democrats right, is a, that's a crime family. It is. It is it now. Is. They look, they, they know where all the bodies are buried because they put them there. That's right. They put them there. And they made the they, Republicans dig the hole. Yep. 
I gotta say, it's it, it's been one of the more interesting parts of my life is watching the Republican was. Party implode. Because I remember growing up, and I, I've said this, like, I came from a military family, and they're like, you know, my dad was encouraging me to to look at the military, and I'm like, Dad, all these rich, powerful bastards just want to send me to die in some desert. I can't do that. Like, the Republican Party so corrupt. Like, I like what they say, but the party itself is just corrupt and awful. And my dad's you like, what's you that? You didn't boy. You didn't no, serve. I didn't serve. Heck no. Hold it against me. Man, you look at what they did to that military, Wayne. Would you serve a today? Dad yeah. That's right. Best <laughs> years of my life. <laughs> Mine, too. I loved it. We didn't go to war. Well, yes, we did go to war, too. Sorry about that. Yeah, we did. We saw some crazy stuff over there. But we hear those. See, look, but we hear those. Look, look, J-Rob, me, me, Hutch, we, we here. We I looked at the Republican Party. As just looking to destroy the poor working class white folks in these endless wars while the power mongers got rich from their kickbacks from the military industrial complex. We didn't know that 10 years ago. We yeah, didn't yeah, know that. Yeah, no. I didn't. I, I, I saw know, I that early on. I and used that's to wave I'm the like, flag, man. I used to hate people like you. I know. People <laughs> called me, oh, you're anti American. And I'm like, <laughs> I feel kind of dumb now, but that's the way I felt. I, Oh, I was always conservative. Like, I liked church, and I thought you worked hard, and I was against every policy the Democrats stood for I was against. But I'm like, the Republican Party is owned by the military-industrial complex. Indeed. And now it turns that, out. Uh, that's, yeah, that's that's what, I, that's what I grew up thinking. Too. I mean, but then again, that, that was a word on the street, and the word on the street carried a whole lot of weight back then. You know, Remember when they always used to say it's election year? Yeah. That would be the answer to everything. Yep. Every international thing that happened, it's election year. Yep. This, this on the street. The most, on the street. This is the most important election that we will ever have in yeah. our lifetime. Said it every election. Yep. And in and in the um in the black neighborhoods. Hi, I'm Democrat, such and such. And I got see, the clipboard. Yeah. Great, great neighborhood you have here. I want to get elected so I can do such and such. You see no Republicans, you just see Democrats. And and that's what that's what I think some people don't want to accept today. They'll say, I don't know why um black Americans or I don't know why uh people still vote for the Democrats because the Democrats went out and knocked on doors. And because okay. the Republicans don't care if they win elections. Exactly. Exactly. They, don't. they make much more money when they don't. I've said that a thousand times. That's and when true. I figured that out, when I finally figured that out, it all made sense. Yep. Man, they go from meat and potatoes to beef tartar when yep. when they start winning. And well, when they start loot. But and and that took me a while to understand that too. I was like, wait a minute. They fight like demons when they behind don't they we need to we need to get and like us and we're going we change stuff they getting they, you know how you can tell how fraudulent they are hmm. look how vehemently they go against their own people right against their own a, a conservative person is, is going to get eaten up by republicans never a democrat well that's why I like the criticism of the republican party tax cuts for the rich like there's some truth to that you know, supporting corporations. There, if you're honest about it, there's that's true. That you can it solve is, a whole is. lot of our fiscal problems by making these billionaires pay the same amount everybody else does. But, but the thing about why it, why wouldn't is, we want that? When you look at those billion, right, right? But when you look at those billionaires, a whole lot of those billionaires are Democrats. Exactly. You know, and it's like, but it, but if you let the Democrats, that's why nothing ever passes. Right, but it but if you let the Democrats tell a story, their story is that the Republicans are the one are the rich. And if you look at Democrat voters, they believe it. Uh, exactly right. Right. They believe what Mayorkas just said. Oh yeah, I know. Yeah. Yep. Well, and the difficulty too with the taxing the billionaires or corporations is it requires a, a fundamental change in how we have the system structured. Yeah, go yeah. back to the Bible and let's tithe. Right. <laughs> That's yeah. the best thing Dem Carson ever said. Right. But but I mean, if you look at it, Elon Musk, he's worth a gajillion dollars. 
but he doesn't make money until he sells his stock and then he's mm-hmm. got to pay tax on it. That's how they avoid it is they encourage people to. And, and I told the story of my buddy, Jim, he bought Tesla stock, $10,000 went up to a hundred thousand dollars in value. And, mm-hmm. I, and it was funny cause he was a Democrat voter and this was over like three years. And I said, so here's what you need to understand about this tax. The billionaires, they want you to pay tax on your capital gains. And he's like, well, I don't have any money. I'm like, right, that's what they're proposing. And he's like, so I'd have to sell some of my stock to pay my taxes. And then if it goes down, I don't get the money back. I'm like, yeah, that's the proposal. So mm-hmm. that's where it's tricky. But then that hits all of us in our 401ks. You look at what happens whenever anybody comes up with a sane idea. Look at what they did to Herman Cain. Right. Yeah. After 999, yeah. all yeah. of a sudden there's a woman that he's hitting on that he never did. Yeah. Well, like, America's like, hey, you know what? That's not... That's a good idea. It was catching on. It was catching on. It was catching on. And then the the like, well, I gotta go. I'm the black Ross Perot. I gotta go. Um, we gotta go. It's been it's been an awesome week. Uh next week we'll be back on our regular schedule. Um I want to thank everybody for tuning in. I'm gonna let J Rob have his final thoughts. I'm gonna let Hutch have his, and then I'll bring up the rear. Go, Jay. Uh, I was going to say, folks, 2024 is going to be a wild ride. Thanks for being on the ride with us. Do us a favor. Make sure you share the show. I especially encourage you to share with somebody you might not politically agree with. We're going to do our best this year to bring you the truth, tell you the stories that are important of what's going on. Um, For things going on this weekend, it's January 6th anniversary. Biden has a speech. It's moved up to the 5th. Uh, the propaganda machines are going to be out in full spin. And you know what? We'll be here to recap it on Monday. But your friends and neighbors are starting to wake up to the real story of January 6th. So that's why it's important you share content like ours with them so that they can say, wait a second. You mean they escorted the QAnon shaman through the Capitol? Like, I thought they were overthrowing the government. So... This weekend will be an important weekend to uh, to stay close to your friends and neighbors. But thanks I'll, for a great week. I'll tell you, we're blessed to have somebody like President Trump at the helm. Uh, this guy, he learns. When, when he goes through something, he doesn't do it like a normal politician and fails to learn anything from any mistakes he makes. He, may, he makes mistakes and he learns from them. Uh, think about the electric vehicle fiasco. And then think of Reagan, Ronald Reagan. Hmm. Teamsters General President Sean M. O'Brien met privately with President Donald Trump on Wednesday for an in-depth and productive discussion on worker issues most important to the Teamsters Union. That's a win, Donald Trump. I'd love to see you on your game. As we leave uh, for the weekend, we want to make sure that, you know, we have talked about uh, God, we have talked about country, we've talked about dedication and patriotism. Uh, th- these are things that you need to to uh, to share with your families and um, your special friends. But make sure that you are not forgetting to 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 pray and to ask God to take care of things. And when you do ask God to take care of things, um, it something I grew up with a long time ago. It's like uh, people people used to, um, I'm the son of a pastor, and people used to, whenever he, at the end of the sermon, he used to do the, uh, the prayer. And people used to go up to the altar and he used to pray. And he used to whine and cry and stuff and everything. And then they went back and then they sat down. Uh, but they used to do this every week. And um, my father was like, one Sunday he was like, I, I just have a question. Why is it that the same people keep on getting up here every week doing the same crying and the same snotting and the same moaning every week? It's like you ask God to do something, let him do it. But what's happening is many people ask God to do something and then they walk away like, is he going to do it? And then you have some of you who are like, well, I asked God to do it, but he's taking too long, so I'll go ahead and do it myself. And we all get into that rut where 
Well, if it's not being taken care of when we want to be taken care of, then God ain't going to take care. God's going to take care of it when he wants to take care of it in his own time. And and usually it's right on time. It's not when we want it. It's right on time. You know, don't rush certain things. Let let certain things pan out. God, uh, I think we had somebody come on this show and say this, but God let Biden get elected. Now, circumstances were very bad that we all say, but God, he cheated. Okay, he might have cheated, but God let it happen. Because if be, tell you what, if God didn't want it to happen, it wouldn't happen. But if you really look at it, God was like, okay, I put Trump in the White House. God let that happen too. I put Trump in the White House in 2016. You know what y'all did? Y'all blasted him. Y'all turned it away. Y'all turned the circus on him and everything. Y'all wanted something that was worse. Y'all wanted something that was worse than Obama, period. So, all right, fine. I give it to you. Now you now you see, I gave you somebody to straighten stuff out. Y'all didn't want that. So now I'm so, so now I'm giving y'all what y'all want. And now y'all really don't want this. And now y'all begging for Trump back. Get yourselves together, people. Get yourselves together. It's it it it's t- t- um, uh, uh, Jay was talking about 2024. 2024 is a great time to, to, to get common sense back at the beginning of your life. Get common sense back and 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 start um, start working things out for yourself from now on. Don't rely on these. Don't rely on the media. Don't don't rely on people in Congress to tell you stuff. You start coming up. With, you grab yourself a voice. You might start your own radio network. <laughs> you might start your own podcast on on um, stream uh, speaker speaker. You might start your own website, American Tribune. You you might. You might do all this stuff. As a matter of fact, before I go, um, tell people where they can find your website. Uh, I'm at theamericantribune.com. And then for the juicy stuff, it's theamericantribune.news. And tell people how they can listen to you, Hutch. Coldwarradio.net. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 8 p.m. Eastern time. With that said, we're out. God bless each and every one of you. And remember, if you get in trouble this weekend, please don't, don't come and call us because we broke. We ain't got no money.